Founded on Christ podcast. As always, you're here with Curtis, another fellow disciple of Jesus Christ, seeking to follow him, seeking to be obedient uh, to the promptings and uh, proceed down the path that the Lord has for me. As always, I keep this channel open as an opportunity for anyone else to share their testimony of Christ as well and how Christ is directing them, what their role is that God has for them, and and to say anything they feel inspired to say. And you can send that into the Founded on Christ podcast at gmail.com. Uh, this week, I want to go look at 1 Corinthians chapter 13. It's interesting, uh, last week I had a podcast in mind. I tried to put it together. Uh, but it didn't just didn't feel right, couldn't quite get there, and so I kind of let it sit and knew that I'd come back to it. And funny enough, uh, this came up as something I needed to do this week and what I had planned get pushed off till next week, so stay tuned. But this was this was put in the forefront of my mind, and I knew that it was something I wanted to remind everybody of and to share my insights of. So, going to 1 Corinthians 13, this is Paul uh, with his epistle to the Corinthians, starting in verse 1. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, and have not charity, I am becoming as sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And although I have the gift of prophecy, and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. I'm going to keep going, but just stopping there for a second. Those verses really hit me strong this week. Um, because here, Paul is describing what I think many of us view as the hopeful pinnacle of our spiritual development, which is being able to speak with the tongue of angels, having the gift of prophecy, understanding all mysteries, having all faith. And from in my mind, when he, what he's saying here, having all faith, that's not just belief, I think that's part of it, but faith in my mind is also applying that belief into your actions to the point that you're doing everything that God is putting to your heart, that you reach these ascension experiences that we wish to have, that Nephi experienced, that the brother of Jared experienced, that the apostles experienced on the day of Pentecost, these wonderful shedding, like huge sheddings of God's grace upon us to the point of of cleansing out the Gentile blood from us and bringing us into a higher state of knowledge, understanding, and, and harmony with God. He's saying all these things that you are seeking after, that uh, you know we're trying to seek after as followers of Christ, if you have all of these things, but yet you still fail to have charity, then these things are all pointless. They mean nothing, and you are of naught, which was dramatic. And I'll keep going, but I want to, you know, th this is kind of the setup for what my heart is, wh where my heart is this week. And I know that uh, I think I tend to hit this a lot, <laughs> this concept of having charity and love over everything else. And I'm starting to realize that being founded on Christ is love. That is the paramount pinnacle of all of it, of everything that there is to this, is love. And so I'm starting to realize that that is probably going to be an ever-watchful part of my message here on this channel. It's about having true love and charity as you seek to be fully founded upon Christ. So keep going. Verse 3, and I thought this one was interesting. Uh, well, I'll read it first. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. It's interesting. You read that first part of the verse. Although I bestow all my goods to feed the poor. I think a lot of us, if you were, you were to do that, if you were to see somebody do that, you'd be like, wow, that person has real charity. They give away everything they owned right, to come and follow Christ. They, 
they must have charity. But he's saying here that that doesn't necessarily mean one-to-one. Someone can go through acts of huge sacrifice, supposedly, on the outward face of it, but still not have love in their heart in so doing it. And if they don't, those great acts of, of supposed sacrifice, right, in God's name, if you don't have love for your, your man, your fellow man and woman, when you do it, it doesn't do anything for you. It, it profits you nothing. Verse 4, charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up. Doth not behave itself unseemingly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in truth, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. And I'm going to end there. Uh, he continues to go on. But uh, for me, that kind of sums up my feelings. It's interesting. You read through all those things, and it's really easy to get into this hyperbole place. Like, yeah, yeah, love is the greatest thing. We get it. Love is ultimate. Love can do everything. But I think, go back through each one of those things. Verses 4 through eight and taught and see all the things that he claims love to be and is not and ask yourself as a disciple of jesus christ as somebody who goes about to do his will every day are those the guidelines in which we operate in all these aspects of trying to be a disciple of jesus christ are we kind do we envieth not Do we not seek after ourselves or get puffed up? All those things that are mentioned here. And I thought that very last verse was very interesting. It's saying that charity will never go away. Charity is never going to fail. Charity will always be an important aspect to being a follower of Christ, to being a son and daughter of God, and in the household of faith. Prophecies eventually we will have their time and place and they'll eventually be done away with same with knowledge and tongues all these all these things that are so important to our lives right now we see you know we view and feel are so important and they are they have their proper place but none of them reach the pinnacle which is charity so let me ask when was the last time you felt that you actually exemplified charity in the name of our Savior. Maybe you have some experiences coming to mind readily and quickly, and which is great. Maybe if you're like me, you're having to scrounge a little bit more and trying to remember you know, the time that you felt like you really exemplified charity. Uh, and quite frankly, it doesn't really matter what you have done or haven't done. This is a strong invitation to make that a part of what you're doing in the coming week, in the coming month, year, whatever. Maybe reformatting the foundation of how you operate as a disciple of Christ. It's really easy for us to get caught up in doctrine and repentance and not to say that those things aren't important, but we can get we can get caught up in the minutia, you know, the foundation really is built around love for God and love for our neighbor, right? Those are the two greatest commandments for a reason, which is why charity is so important. And so, invitation this week, people truthfully need love. They need care. There's people out there suffering who And maybe they're not fully suffering, but they are in need of love. And the Lord is waiting for us to be willing to give it. Those, that is the paramount in my mind. And I believe that's what this scripture is saying here with Paul, love and the application of it to those in need is 
the gospel of Jesus Christ. And as I've mentioned before, let's make sure that we're expressing true godly love to these people and not love in the way that we try to define it as in these people need to be told how horrible they are so that they can know that they need to repent and come back into my way of thinking. That is a selfish, puffed up way to love. Love is going to each individual person saying, how can I help you? What are you in need of? And I would say even the better version, because we all know everyone answers those questions with nothing. The real better version of this is to be so close to the spirit that it tells you to do things and you just do it for that person. That you know your neighbor well enough to know when they're having a tough time. You love your neighbor consistently so that you know when they are suffering and you know what you can do to help them. The spirit will step in and fill in the gaps, but true charity, really long suffering, right, is getting into it every day to get to know the people around you so that when they do have a trial, they don't necessarily, you don't have, they shouldn't have to rely necessarily on telling you what's wrong, right? I know this is a little bit radical and maybe a little bit hard. I mean, this isn't easy for me to hear either because I, you know, I'm, I tend to be somewhat of a private person. I like to take care of my own stuff and, and I like to help people, but I'm not very good about getting into their, you know, their business. And, and this isn't an excuse to be nosy, but it is an opportunity to exemplify love in the, to others as God does to us. God takes the time to know who we are, where we are, and what we need, and then he fills in those gaps as we need them. We can't do that fully yet. We're, we haven't reached that amount of grace and power. We hope to someday do that. But this is our opportunity to attempt to do that in our weakness so that when we are made perfect, we can do it perfectly. As always, seek after his face. Amen. Amen.